get used to it. Hola muchachos, ¿cómo están? Uh, es la una de la tarde, hoy es miércoles y solamente tenemos dos días más para Spring Break. ¡Bravo! Ok, antes de comenzar Spring Break, yo quiero explicar el subjuntivo. El subjuntivo. Before I, uh, before I even begin to talk about when you use the subjunctive, it's important that you realize that you already know how to form the subjunctive. Okay? This is the same conjugation that you used when we did the commands. So, for example, for the verb tener, for the verb tener, uh, you go to the yo form, which is tengo, you drop the o, you drop the o, and you switch the vowel. The verb is er, so you go to a. Tenga, tengas, tenga, tengamos, tengan. So it stays. We've talked about this. We've done the subjunctive conjugation before. So tomorrow uh, in lab, we're going to do conjuguemos to, to refresh our memories on the conjugation. Today, uh, in this video, this, I'm talking to you about when do you use the subjunctive. What I need you to do is I need you to draw two umbrellas. Draw two umbrellas. Okay, there's two umbrellas. Under one umbrella, under one umbrella, we're going to write the word indicative. Indicative means everything we've done until this moment. And then subjunctive is what we're going to do after this. Let me be a little more clear. Present, preterite, imperfect, future, perfect, uh, progressives, all of those guys, those are tenses. These guys are called moods. Moods. You've never heard of moods because English doesn't use moods. But Spanish has moods. Everything that falls under the indicative umbrella implies certainty. Present tense, it is happening. There's no doubt in my mind that it is happening. Preterite, it happened. Imperfect, it was happening. Again, no doubt in my mind. There's certainty there. Future and conditional. Again, no doubt in my mind that this has happened or is going to happen or will happen. No doubt. Subjunctive in its present tense, in its preterite tense, in its future, in its conditional, in its, it, these guys are mere images of each other. This guy, in its mood, there's doubt. There is a lot of doubt. Let me explain. First, if you go, let me see if I can erase this so we can do this. First, if you go to the word sub and then junction, that alone gives you a complete understanding of what subjunctive is. Sub means that it is less than, means that it is second in line, which means that the subjunctive conjugations can never, ever, ever stand alone. You need to have indicative and then subjunctive. Subjunctive will always be the second verb in line. It'll come clearly. It has to be joined to another verb. Has to be. It has to be joined and it has to be second, never first. We talked about how to put it together. You go to the yo form, drop the yo, switch the vowel. That's what that is. Here's an example, tengo. Okay, uh, let's go here. Pintar, we've done. You know what? I'm in the wrong place. 
Let me go here. This will help. Okay, so sub means under, below, less than, junctive, joined together. It can never be used alone. It appears as the second clause of the sentence. Uh, for example, Maria wants to go to the party. There's no subjunctive there because there's only one clause. Only one clause. What determines a clause? A clause is determined by the subject and a verb. There's only one subject. There's only one verb. However, check this out. Maria wants Jose to go to the party. Now we have two clauses. Maria wants subject, verb. Jose to go, subject, verb. The first clause works as a trigger. And it triggers subjunctive to be used in the second clause. Because remember, it's sub. It can only be used in the second clause. It can never be the introductory. What are some of these triggers that we have? We have what we call will or wish, which is what I just showed you. Maria wants Jose to go to the party, but... Whether or not Jose goes, she has no clue. Whether or not he goes is very doubtful. She wants him to go. So whenever the first sentence expresses a will or a wish, the second one must be subjunctive. Remember, aya, vaya, sea, sepa, that's what this is. When the first clause expresses emotion. Maria is sad that Jose is sick. Subjunctive. When you have the first one is emotion. And then this is the one that we are going to focus on, is the impersonal expressions. We'll talk about those in a second. But basically, impersonal means uh, that they're just that, they're impersonal. It's important, it's ridiculous, it is um, certain, it is uh, possible, it is all those impersonal expressions that start with it is are going to require subjunctive. This is the only thing we're focusing on in Spanish 3. The rest of it we're going to do in Spanish 4. Requests, all of my commands, that's why the commands were subjunctive because I can ask you, dude, go close the door. But whether or not you close the door, I don't know. It's really up to you. That's why commands are in the subjunctive. Doubt, obviously, right? And then you've got this little trigger right here, which is ojalá, which is just a generic word for saying, I hope, we hope, they hope. But like I said, the only thing I want you to worry about right now is the impersonal expressions. It's good that, it's important that, it's logical that, it's bad that Maria sneak out of the house. It's better that Jose studies for his exams. It's dangerous that they drive at night. All of these are going to be followed by the subjunctive. So copy these down. There's some on page 234 and we'll talk more about them tomorrow, okay? So, uh, hasta luego. Adiós.